Okay, so um, I'm with Monica, who um, is the filmmaker behind 13th Step. Now, Monica was has not only been nominated to London, congratulations for that. Thank you, thank you so much. No, thank you're you. welcome. But um, some viewers may not realise, actually, that she was nominated with the same film and our festival in Berlin uh, just three or four months ago. But the interesting thing is actually the cut that, uh, that Monica supplied, the one that went through, it's actually a shorter cut, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, and um, if you could, just for the sake of, a little bit, same, sorry, same kind of bit of preamble, if you could just explain briefly what, introduce yourself and explain what your film's about, your documentary. Oh, okay. about. All right, you want me to tell them Yeah, no, talk to me. Well, talk to me. I'll talk to you. So uh, the film is, uh, I'm Monica Richardson. Yeah. I'm the director and producer of The 13th Step. The 13th Step is a film about predatory behavior in Alcoholics Anonymous and in the culture. Uh, in threefold, the court ordering of violence and sex offenders to AA. Yeah. The public doesn't know, many AA members don't know. And I decided when I found out that Christine and Sandra Cass were murdered that I would make a film because mm. I was so shocked by it. Yeah. The film is also about that there's other alternatives to Alcoholics Anonymous that were developed in this century, like in the last 20 years, that there's three drugs that help with um, cravings, um, Kempel, Naltrexone, and Vivitrol, and that the using of CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapies and motivational interviewing, that many people can just now go to a therapist that many are now trained in this field of addiction that are not in AA uh, and that believe in more scientific uh, approach than religious. And the film is also about that how old AA is and how religious it is, how, mm. you know, I mean, I really uh, I went down that road because I was in AA for a long time and I left in 2011 and it's what happened. Can we just, just, um I've just got a number of questions, but the one that first one that springs to mind, just from what you just said there, is um, the point of this story, the story you're telling with the 13th step, this kicked off, you did, did you know anything about this when you were in AA or this happened after you left AA? Yes, very good question. So yes, of course, I, I know because I was 13 stepped at 18, Yeah. and then again at 19, 19 was really, really bad by two uh, older middle-aged men. Um, I really should have left AA then, so I was 13 stepped. I watched the community not support me the first mm. time. Uh, the second time, an older Hawaiian woman sort of came to my rescue and was kind of really took me in, was very mad. There was a lot of 13 stepping done back then in the 1970s, mid 70s it was, I was really young, uh, by just a couple of men. I was in Hawaii. And I kind of, over the decades, sort of just went to women's meetings and then it was a young woman who came to the meeting who was sobbing who told the story and I'm like oh my god like this is still going on this is like what 2000 whatever and I started to go to mixed meetings with her and saw a really different uh, uh, which is say demographic in meetings it was really creepy when you say mixed meetings, so before it was same sex yeah so I, w I had over, as the years went on I didn't want to go and get hit on myself by men in AA so I went to went just women's meetings that were non-predatory, just yeah, to kind yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and over the years, there's been more and more men stag in women's meetings because people just didn't want to deal with the crap that was going on in meetings. What... Uh, I can't believe I've asked this before, but in your experience, what's the breakdown of men, women, that attend the meetings as, as a percentage? Yes, yeah, so it's really men heavy. Right. I, I think uh, AA stats are like 65% male, and it's very white. Right. It's white and male, older male, but yeah. So it's, it's men heavy and... Although they've been really going after young people, but they can go on the computer and if something happens to them and they start to doubt or, you know, become critical, they can go to the computer in Google and they'll find me or someone else like me. And it's interesting that uh, you mentioned there that there's alternatives to AA, but of course most, 99.9% .9 include himself, didn't realise that other, there's other help groups out there because as soon as I hear of someone with a drink problem, I'm going to immediately think of AA. Right, right. So, and, and are these alternatives something that's grown up as a consequence of AA, or have they grown up because um, they they just they just did, if that sort of makes sense? Yes, yes. So, Smart Recovery, which is the biggest like face-to-face -face meetings, um, was actually created by Joe Gerstein, who's out of Massachusetts. Right. And he created something because he he's a doctor, and he found people coming to him who did pain management who were addicted. Mm. I just interviewed him on my Blog Talk radio right, okay, show. Okay. Okay. And I learned so much from him because Tom Horvath was the president for the last 20 years. But he found all these people said just go to AA, and they would come back and they'd go, I can't take it, I can't. And he found this like pushback. And uh, because he believed in, you know, sort of secular thinking, 
non-religious, he, mm. start, he started using uh, new approaches and asking them what did they want. And as a result of he and Jack Trimpey, who created Rational Recovery, and Tom Horvath, and actually Mark Kern, who's in the film too, who created Moderation Management later, all started one thing. Oh, right. So they've all got these different um, yeah, they things kind of, going on, yeah. but they kind of came together in the end. Yeah, well, they came in the, in, together in the beginning, right. and then there was a splinter. Oh, so again, yeah. and then, then yeah, okay. Yeah, and there was a splinter, and then Smart Recovery was created when Jack Trimpey said there's going to be no more meetings in Rational Recovery. There's a lot right. of history about this stuff. Which is maybe why it didn't grow so much, because Rational Recovery was really taking off, and then Jack said, no more meetings. And they had to just stop the meetings. There were 600 all over the country 20 years ago. Right. So they, so about then. And so they- Well, you 600, 600 different groups. Yeah. Wow, that's quite way. big, yeah, yeah. So it, it was already on its way, yeah. and then they, he quit, he stopped it. And so they, then that's when Moderation Management cr got created, and that's when Smart Recovery got created, and Life Ring, which is here. So you have in, in England- Never heard of it. So. Yeah, I know. So you have, I didn't either until I, yeah, yeah. you know, on the internet. So you have Life Ring and Smart Recovery here. Right. And, you know, there are not as many meetings, but you know what I said to a judge? I said, well, that's nice. I said, but there's a lot of McDonald's everywhere. It doesn't mean I want to go there. Yeah. It doesn't mean there's good food there or, or whatever. I want to go to have fresh, you know, a salad or something. And so to me, Smart Recovery and these other groups are like fresh and like, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy or like, you know, you do a cost benefit analysis of mm. like, what's the good part of drinking? What's the bad part? What's the good part yeah, of that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, nice. yeah, you apply that to lots of things in life. Right, but Smart has doubled since I, since I discovered it. Since I like found out about it, it's really grown. So I think, that, I mean, a huge problem has got to be, which I know, I, I know about the UK, but I know you're facing this because of conversations we've had that AA, and correct me if I'm wrong, are tied into the penal system in such yes. a way that, yeah. um, you know, for instance, you, uh, you, you're an alcoholic, you committed a crime because you're an alcoholic, and part of the reason is because you've got a drink problem. The first thing they're going to say, I assume, is yeah. you've got to go to AA meeting. Yeah, yeah. So how do you break, how is that going to be broken down? Yeah, so... Because they're too intricately, it's so big. intrinsically linked. Yeah, and, and the guy, as I was making the film, I, I, the deeper I got was like that I went to an event where there was like all these lawyers and judges in Los Angeles, like 500 of them. Yeah. And I met the head of a judge, like, so one judge oversees a courthouse too. Yeah. And I met him. And he actually knew who I was. He knew about my film. He said, we're not interested. I was like, oh my God. Like, Before you, know, you even said, he said, I'm Yeah, I said, hi, I'm Monica. I want, I want to talk to you about the court ordering of violent and sex offenders to AA meetings. And he like, you know, just was like, we're not interested. We're not, I was like, what are you talking about? You're not interested. Oh, interesting. So, that is interesting. Yeah. Oh, well, well, what, there's, well, that's several, several strands opening up there. What, what I wonder... Uh, I mean, you're probably never going to know the answers, but I wonder why he immediately said that and knew who you were and what had been said to him. So you can see where this is kind of leading. So even before you even got a question out, he's not, he's pulling away. Yes, yeah, so, well, was how, what somebody said to me, which was Yaro, Carla's mother, that the lawsuit was in that courthouse. Right, okay. Right, and so of course he would have to know about it because they're all going to talk about mm, somebody mm. suing Alcoholics Anonymous. And that, of course, that court, um, that, that lawsuit was dropped very, like really recently, probably since Berlin, we yeah. went to court and they dropped it. But the way to get in is that then I was on a, uh, I was a juror on a trial and I talked to that judge who was very nice and he was very interested. And he said, I'd like to introduce you to the courtroom where they do all the DUIs. And so there's an in there. Yeah. So I've decided to go where people are like, because a lot of them see that it's not working. There's, there's a whole program right now going on in Kentucky for heroin. The guys are in prison. And they know that if they just let him out with the opiate issue, that they're just going to come back. So now they're giving him Vivitrol shots. And the, the recidivism is so much lower. Just for having shots? Yeah. The, and I think, hopefully, they're getting CBT. I could still see that they were doing NA meetings, because I know exactly what yeah, that yeah, looks yeah, like yeah, in the yeah. video. I was yeah, like, yeah. ah, man, that's 12 step. But if they're at least give, give, it's administering the Vivitrol, and the guys, those guys, when they get out, they can also go online and they can find out there's something else yeah, there. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So it'll, but there are people now, it's not just me alone, all over the country and actually all over the world. There's a lot of people here uh, in the UK who want to see the change, harm reduction, mm. meeting people where they're at instead of saying, you know, you need to be abstinent. And people are like, uh, I don't want to do that. Mm. So harm reduction is, you know, well, what do you want to do? We're going to, meet, we're going to reduce the harm first, right? Well, so rather than, as, as an example, I'm saying, well, you've got to cut it straight away, that's the end of, these other programs presumably must have a different approach. They do, and now Naltrexone, uh, which is a pill that you take an hour before you drink, especially if somebody's been drinking really heavy, like they're getting up in the morning and they're drinking like straight vodka or yeah. gin, they could have a seizure 
and they could die. And they don't need to go to, maybe don't need to go to rehab or they don't want to or they want to take off from work or they're embarrassed. You take the pill and then, you know, with some food and then an hour later you drink. And then what happens over a period of weeks is it gets to drink less. I mean, for people who it works, it works really well for. Oh, right. So it's, in luck in, it's a slow inhibitor. Or, or yes, yeah. it's an opiate blocker. Right, okay. And so it makes the wow go away. I mean, you got to be willing to do it, mm. right? So yeah, if yeah. you take it and you go, hey, I don't feel anything. God, oh, this sucks. And you don't take the pill. That's why the Vivitrol shot. Yeah, people will use that. But, you know, I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to, you know. But no, no, but it's, in, it's interesting. This is what I've learned. Yeah, um, it's interesting stuff. Yeah. So what's that? I know it's only been um, a few months, but I, again, off camera from my conversation, I know quite a lot's happened. So if you can tell us, even in a short period of time, um, we should explain, and let, again, unless I'm wrong, you've made, you, you've trimmed this because it, to make it, Broadcastable because it's now coming in less than an hour, isn't it? Yes, yes. I so do. yeah, we should just explain it. But yeah, if you could tell us, explain, just in these last few months, what exactly has gone on? So I decided that I would make it shorter so that it could go to broadcast because there yeah. was international companies that were interested in yeah. distribution, and they're like, you got to get it under you know 52 minute hour, Monica. And I said, okay, fine. So I pulled some stuff out of it, my story and Callie's story. You didn't find that too difficult, because I know that's always I, a problem. You know what? I didn't, though. Like, each time that I've wanted to cut it, I thought, you know what? I could take my story and pop it up on a short video and put it up on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, and that's also available on Vimeo. So the director's cut is on Vimeo to rent and buy. Right. So I kind of have best of both worlds. It's It's been on Amazon now for since the beginning of October. It's doing really well. That's the short version. And I just thought my story was not as bad as being murdered or raped, yeah, or, you yeah. know, and I just was like, it was horrible what happened to me, but I wasn't like, uh -huh, you know, I'm still here. Yeah. And um, the other thing that's happened is that I reached out to a really successful nonprofit president, you know, the owner of, of something, and I said to him, how did you do this activism? And he said, you got to call him. You got to call New York and you got to tell them, you know, got to want to sit down with them. You want to begin a conversation. And so I, be, I sent the petition that we had online to them. Yeah. And then I came to Berlin and then I, I just started calling. And then other people started calling New York and I found out they were having a board meeting. And I said, I want you to put this on the agenda. Now, I never got through to the president of, of AA. He's called the general service manager. It's the president. And, but I got to talk to his assistant or secretary and I told her what, you know, we wanted to have this conversation. So I sent a letter, I told my demands, how to make it safe, how easy it would be to make it safe, and please have this discussion with your board and implement it, right? So, like right after the board, the, that following week, a poster posted it in one of my deprogramming groups on Facebook. Wow. And it's a three-pager of them talking about the problems. Now, what I want to know, and I called and they won't answer me yet, and I'm going to still keep calling, is I want to know, okay, so did you send this out to the delegates, to the GSRs, to the districts, and say, okay, we want you to now have a discussion, start talking about it, I want you to put up a sign, I want you to make an announcement through yeah, the meeting. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if they're doing that, but we're not going to stop until, I mean, come on. They're a multi-million dollar nonprofit, and they have a responsibility to have a sexual harassment policy. Every other nonprofit has one. But see, what, what amazes me is, as soon as you said, you made the call, they didn't just slam the phone down. Because that's the f first thing I thought they'd do. <laughs> but you, know, you can see where I'm coming from. I mean, really, because what you're doing is, um, you're telling a story that exposes a, a, a dark side they would rather not people not know about, I guess. Right. I'm choosing my words carefully. So I'm quite surprised they didn't just go, no. So they took, someone took the call then. You know, I was once in AA, and I'm a good person. Yeah, yeah. But there's still good people in AA who actually care. Some of them want to stay and see things get better. Some are really stubborn. So those people in there, I know a lot of people are in there and want to see that they want the court ordering to stop. Yeah. They want the ritualistic stuff to stop that's become very culty. They want people in your face that are telling you what you should do, which AA you know, was kind of a little more laid back 34 years ago. So there are good people in there who actually want the change to happen. Right, okay. So, so are we completely up to date or is there more to tell here? Because that's quite a lot to happen in just a couple of months, frankly, isn't it? Yeah, it was good. But I think a lot happened for me meeting with that guy because I realized that the ball was really in my court that they're, they're not going to call me. Mm. That if I want them to change, that I need to be calling and saying, I'm not going to stop. And that if I can ride the Metro, this is what really hit me. So I'm riding the new Metro in West Los Angeles. And on it is a big sign like this about sexual harassment. So I take a picture, I post it on Facebook. And I'm like, are you kidding? Like there was a time if that happened on the train, it's like too bad. 
so what? You got grabbed on the train. It's the train. If I walk crest, uh, past... Oh, so people are much more aware now, yeah. That's yeah. right. It says, this will not be tolerated. Please call this number. Right, okay. If you get grabbed or sexually harassed on the train, I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. And so why can't A do you put a sign up and say, it will not be tolerated here. Mm. You can't say, hey, baby, man, what are you doing later? You know? Like, shut up. I'm here for to get sober. Right? Yeah. I, 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 and I think we might have touched upon this before, because now kind of get the impression this could almost be an ongoing story couldn't it I mean you can make a sequel to a sequel because really yeah I'd like seems to do a to series me, now yeah exactly yeah, I didn't want to before no but. because genuinely I'm kind of thinking so if this is happening in just like two or three months yeah this is almost endless this could be a series because now you've had this meeting you're now getting into like this thing with China with the posters there's alternative groups which I know you've touched upon but now it's really coming to the fore so I I'm assuming that you must have thought about doing something like this. Yeah, I have. And, uh, you know, I haven't even t called the FAA, which makes the pilots. It's yeah. totally embedded. I haven't called them yet. I haven't called the Board of Nursing, which sends nurses for five years to go to AA and treats them like worse than criminals. Uh, who, the doctors. Where do I start? Like with the, the American Medical Association? Hi, I'm Monica Richardson. <laughs> so there's a series here. There's like a, probably eight-parter. And after Leah Remini... I, we're all watching that show, and like, boy, she's our hero. And when I saw Leah Remini's show on A&E, I was like, wow, yeah, I could do a show. I didn't want to, and I said, do eight, eight episodes. And we address, you know, you let somebody, I mean, I really would do it. After I was like, done, I don't want to, let's do the activism and move on. But there is a lot more to tell. And, or else there could be a two-hour piece mm. with, say, CNN, where they co-produced it with me. But, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I suppose the thing is, it, it, I mean, obviously, it's a really important story to tell, and it would be great if you could do um, do a series. But I'm guessing also, I mean, I don't know your lifestyle, but I'm guessing also there's things that you haven't told me that stories you want to tell which are unconnected with this, but they're presumably on the back burner. Or is this just what you're doing and that's it at the moment? Oh, you mean if stuff I want to do? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there is. So I'm not saying this isn't noble because it is, and it's because yeah. it's very, you know, and I totally get it. And I would imagine you could you could spend your life doing yeah, that. And, I, and you know, I, that's why I. But said, at some point you're gonna. Yeah, this is taking a toll on me. See yeah. my face, you know. It's like really a rough subject. Yeah, yeah. And the stories are tragic, and I can only help so much. Like, I'd be willing, if someone called me and said, if you're willing to go to the police if you were raped, I will fly to your city and go with you. But very often they'll be like, no, no, no I don't want to go. But we have somebody in Palm Springs, and she went to the police, and she, uh, there's going to be a trial. But about me, I want to do a This film. is as a result of her AI, as you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, she okay. was raped by a guy. And, and, you know, she's a really interesting subject or person because she had eight years sober. She's not marginal. She wasn't shooting heroin, she's not a drunk, and he had 20 years and he groomed her, meaning that they, mm -hmm. well, this is very similar though, this, I, this is a story I've heard many times, where they knew the person three years, so they wait to build trust. Oh, I this see. isn't just old timer, newcomer. This is slowly, slowly, slowly yeah. and they've gotten away with it for years. But I would like to do a film for my husband and where we do a, a narrative, fictional narrative, he can sing, mm. and I want to make a film that highlights Kevin singing. Because he's really well, and I know we, yeah, 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 and, and, yeah. And, so and actually that's that kind of- That so much fun. So I, yeah, that's kind of um, something, when we were talking to me about Kevin and asking him, shit, you, you can't tell me they haven't been thinking about doing something together. Right. Because right. it, it seems fairly obvious to me. With, I know, because again, like, I hope it's okay to say that yeah, he's, he's involved with The Simpsons now. Right, right. As an example, so. Um, and that would be a nice sort of, not catharsis, but a nice... Yeah, it would be a, nice. A nice, I don't know, you'd do a rom-com, a gemstone, a, 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 a musical, whatever. Yeah, it's going to be all about him singing. He can sing like Sinatra, yeah. he can sing like Barry White, and we would travel through time so that we could go back as far as like Louis Armstrong. And I would fit in certain parts, but I'd get someone else to direct it. Uh, someone and develop. A, I'm writing like the outline now. Yeah. Someone else to write it. We know a lot of great comedy writers that have you know worked on the Cleveland Show or wherever. I think I'm sure I'll find a writer to help us write a screenplay, and then get someone really who's made a film maybe similar to this to direct it. And do, do you have a, a like a? I mean, I, can you see yourself being invested in this? I mean, it might be that you want to be. You'll be this doing this for years and years and years. And but can you see a, a point in time that? you're going to try something else in two, three, four, five, you're just going to play this out as, as long as it takes. Mm -hmm. Because it, you might, it might be that all of a sudden 10 years have gone by, I love 10 years. Yeah, I know, that's a little scary. Yeah. I, I think that a nonprofit needs to be formed 
and that money gets put into it and there could be actually people working not me in the office that yeah. I could be someone who just is uh, on the board yeah and that you could really build a campaign for educating people about the alternatives yeah being there for therapy for those who were harmed a lawyer for people to sue we need a lawyer full time that we could pay. Yeah. And that's like a big that's like, oh my God, that's is so my huge, life yeah, worth that's huge. you know, I don't know. It's a tough it's like someone who gets involved in domestic violence and then their whole life is dedicated to eradicating it and fighting for it and I don't know the answer to that yet. No, but yeah. I suppose the point I'm trying to make is I can I totally understand your passion behind doing this. But I have a life too. Yeah, I, I can sing and yeah. I'm like getting older. Like I look at the clock and I'm gonna turn, you know, I mean, I don't wanna be here forever. Yeah. You know, talking about this. No, brilliant, listen, thank you very much again. Yeah, it's a pleasure, thank you no, for having me No, you're brilliant to interview. <laughs> he would always sit next to her. He would never let anybody get close to her. And exactly four months later, she was dead. If you have a court order, you can just drop it in the basket. And my husband was charged as a sex offender, and he was court-ordered Alcoholics Anonymous, and he didn't drink.